Welcome back guys, it's time to continue our Woking Football Club career here. We had a great start, so let's continue in that vein. As you can see on our club info screen, you can actually see Dwayne Sewell is now our hot prospect, which kind of shows, you know, the, the team recognised that he is probably the next best thing. At 18 year old, obviously we talked about him last episode, really excited to see how he's going to develop. So our first live comm game to date is going to be the Scunthorpe game, which is next. We're then going to continue on with a few highlights of the next game. And we'll either come back for the Yeovil Town game or the Sullivan Murs game. And we'll just see kind of how far we've got in at that point. So looking at our tactic for the Scunthorpe game, everything virtually remains the same apart from the fact that Dean Corbois, because his fitness isn't perfect, put Suell on and put Grego Cox in where Corbois would have been. So Suell on the right and Grego Cox on the left. And I think we should be pretty good for this game. So we have a first highlight, two minutes in, going to Scunthorpe. Lavery, very far forward, playing about his feet. Only finds Daly, but can't clear it properly. And I don't know if that was an attempted shot or not. It might have been. Back in attack they go, but nothing so far. Whitehouse tries it and is very close to a top corner finish there. So far, we've not been in the best of possession. Can we change that here, though? Arthur Reed taking it sideways. Passing it around the middle here. Suell finds Rolls in plenty of space. Can Rolls finish? He does! Eight minutes in, Jack Rolls scores his first goal of the season. And it's a Suell assist as he just seemed to find the space in behind the defenders. See there, daily to Suell, and then rolls just round everyone. Plenty of space, easy as you like that one. So we've lost possession in our own half, but Lofthouse has recovered it. I think that was Nelson who gave that away. Blasted upfield to nobody to receive it. Lavery goes forward and he scores. Oh, that was optimizing himself on a Wilkinson mistake. Wilkinson just didn't seem to go for the ball. Daly is no good at receiving headers. Yeah, Wilkinson, I don't know what he was doing there, but we have gone a 1-1 one, one due to that mistake. So now we go forward. Daly has managed to set that. Wasn't really commented. Didn't think much would happen. But unfortunately, uh, a block there stops anything coming from that. You can see our three centre-backs are struggling now with fitness compared to Scunthorpe, who are pretty much ready and raring for this game. Half time, yeah, tell them to dig deep. Happy with assistance recommendation there. Starting the second half, oh, let's see what we can get. Can James Daly put in a good performance again? He got two goals last time out against Dagenham and Redbridge. The early highlight is to Scunthorpe, but they have wasted that, and Ross easily collects. Working out from the back now, Wilkinson sends it forward to Reed, who's going to hit it forward to no one. And that's just to their keeper now, so we've got back and forth to the keepers for the moment. And we receive it once again from their keeper. Daly can't get onto the end of that. We can expect that. I'm going to have to... I don't know what we're going to... Yeah, I keep saying we're going to find what we can do for that, but I really don't know. Might have to look at their individual instructions. That might be where the issues lie. Right, we are going to bring on... Padre I think it's pronounced Padraig Amond. That could be very much butchered. All right, Sam Allardyce has played awful. Joe McNerney's going to have to come on. We get high light immediately. I don't know if the subs have happened yet. Feeney taking the ball away. Has found space for Lavery. Lavery, and he's just sneaked it under the keeper. It is 2-1 to Scunthorpe. At home, this is not what we wanted. But Scudder would mind to just easily pick us apart there. I think it was McNerney on that side as well, leaving it open. Lack of depth has hurt us a little bit here. Right, so I'm going to take off Avogans and put Casey on, the club captain. Younger Cox has not played well. Oh, we only get three subs. She's down at this level. Forgot about that. So it's just going to be Casey. We're going to demand more. I don't think we're going to get anything from this. It's another highlight, but it's to Scunthorpe once again in the last minute and a bit. O'Malley over the free kick. 
He's taking a while. He's wasting as much time as possible. And it comes. And it's a third goal. Scunthorpe have exploited our fitness issues. Our players are really struggling. So there we have it. Our first loss, unfortunately. You can see on the XG, we were the better team. But I think that back three, just having no energy left, has really hurt us there. Who signed a replacement for Rohan Ince, who we lost to Cheltenham. Free transfer here, Malanchi Talent Arita. Ariti? I'm not sure how you quite say that. Again, another young prospect with great potential. And he's already got a great current ability. Just to show you quickly his stats. So highlighted the central midfield attacking roles. That's what we'll be using him. You can see no below average ratings. They're all decently high for this level. And obviously, he can only get better from here being 19 years old. For the game against Barnet, it is our midfield that mainly changes roles of struggling on fitness. And we also had a slight injury to Arthur Reed. And then McNerney comes on to start uh, as he's no longer injured. So Wilkinson, two talent. But nothing can be made of that. And Kambaba was in clear space there. Could see that coming a mile away. And Barnet have gone 1-0 up. Oh, this is not good. We're going to have to look at this. This tactic worked great for the first two games and now just looks to be struggling a little bit. Powell drives forward and Kabamba's there again. Kabamba gets the goal. And that is 2-0 to Barnett in the first half. Not sure what's going on here. We've got possession. We're just not moving up field at the best of rates. Once again, it's a Barnet highlight, and Kabamba was moving up field there. He got it into the middle, but couldn't find anyone. But it's oh come on, we got the ball. We're gonna get a sending off here, aren't we? Oh no, Corbo, yep, yeah, red card. Could see that coming. Right, gonna move Grego Cox into the middle. See if we can switch things about. So even though Grego Cox has just come on, thought it was best to take him back off as he can't really play in another role that I need at the moment. A 2-0 loss there. Shocking result. Ab absolutely shocking. No excuse for that one. It was bad even before the red card. So I've had to make quite a number of changes to the team lineup today. This is because we've got Wrexham now and then in two days time we have Torquay. So yeah, we're going to do a lot of rotating. Might still change up this defence, but I think I'll leave the changes for the Torquay game. Reed boots upfield. Can't aim and get on the end of that. Tonicliffe makes a mistake. Gregor Cox a Dowling. And Dowling on his debut scores a goal. George Dowling, I just signed him, was going to go over it after the game. Didn't think he was going to make much of an impact. But he's come straight on there and got a goal. So George Dowling was signed on a free just to give us even more depth in midfield. We also have signed a right wing back to be cover for Craft House. Sorry, Loft House. Craft House. Christ, that's a band. For Loft House. Out to Koval who gets it. Thought one of our defenders would get there first, but we haven't managed that. Arthur Reed tackles in the box. I didn't think that was a clear penalty that I thought we got the ball. Even the commentary said they thought it was a dive. Can Ross do anything here? He can't. And Mullen puts it into the bottom left corner. That's his first goal of the season. Of course it is. Vogue into the free kick on the edge. Put in. And Wilkinson is tackled in the box. Let's see who we can put on penalties. Uh, let's put George Dowling. It was set to Wilkinson. I'm assuming that's just because at the time he was the best penalty taker. But here we go. Can George Dowling double his tally on his debut for Woking? He does! It's 2-1 Woking in the dying embers of the match. So there we have it. May have been slightly fortunate there, or very fortunate. But 2-1 is the result, and it was a result we needed against a, probably a, a much stronger side. We did have the bear XG, but yeah, that was uh, by the skin of our teeth. That result moves us into 7th and wrecks him into 10th. And as I said before, it's Torquay that we have to play next, who just drew with Maidstone. So they're just below us, a one point behind. You can see our lineup today now has changed. I keep saying today. <laughs> the lineup for this game has changed against Torquay. There's a lot of fitness issues. But we've had to rotate, so hopefully we can still get a decent result. 
Um, but it's uh, it's a tricky one. Matoti getting his debut in defence. Cuthbert coming back. Allardyce in the middle. It's a bit shocking. Bramble at right wing back getting his debut. Yeah, a lot of uh, changes for this one. Allardyce, what can he do with it? He puts out to Vulcans. A common way for us to go. And it just gets misplaced there. Andrews is through. Andrews scores against the run of play. I wasn't even really commentating on it. I thought we were going to get to that. Corey Andrews gets through our defence there. Crow from the right-hand side puts it in. And, yeah, both defenders obviously thinking one of the other is going to go for it. And nobody goes for it in the end. Oh, guys, I don't know what to say. This has been a really bad run of form so far. We're going to have to see what we can do to improve this. So because Sam Allardyce had a good game last time out, I've actually given him the opportunity to play again, alongside Luke Wilson and Sid Nelson in defence. We then got Lofthouse in right wing back. So in actual fact, Bramble and Reese, what's his name? Brown. Reese Brown, I knew that. Have actually both gone on international duty with Antigua and Barbudan. Obviously that's one country. So yeah, they're actually both out on the same international duty, which is an odd one to see. I've never even looked at the, the nationalities closely enough for that. And then the rest of the team is looking very similar to us. Although Dowling and Arthur Reed both starting at the same time for the first time. They have not partnered up previously. Bogans with a throw in. Greg Cox. he puts it well into the box. Nobody's there to receive it. Lothouse on the edge. It goes for a shot and it's in. Ratcliffe doesn't get a strong enough touch. Uh, to parry it away, and uh, Lofthouse has converted that goal. That was amazing. I did not expect that to go in. What a ball from Falkins. Unfortunately, didn't find anyone. But Lofthouse, nobody comes out to him, and he just goes for it. 1 0 to Woking. Obiero has got through the middle of our centre backs. What can he do? Put in for Kreshmar. And Kreshmar does score for Weddle. Weldstone. I can't pronounce their team name properly. Weldstone. Oh, that is disappointing. We have been on top of them the whole time. But in actual fact, I only noticed they started getting shot, so I did not react enough to that. Johnson with the corner. Doesn't find Amond. He does, however, get it back again near the edge of the box. Wilkinson to Reed. See what I think's offside. He does score, but it, yeah, it is offside. Been called a by the assistant. Another disappointing result when we were on top for most of this. We just didn't react to their change of tactic, though. So Vulcans was injured for this match. So I actually decided to put Tyreek Johnson into the wingback position. He seems pretty comfortable there, and I think that'd be a really good attack and wingback position for him. So you can see a few changes. Jack Rolls comes back into the team. Patrick Amond is now our pressing forward, so we changed that a little bit just to see if we can get something out of this. We're going to actually go on a positive play, and we're going to work the ball in the box. Everything else is going to stay the same. So we don't normally get a highlight straight from kickoff. Yeovil, with that kickoff, is looking to get forward. I'm hoping that doesn't mean they're going to get a goal in the first few seconds, but it's getting closer. I'm a bit nervous. They've still got the ball. Oh, it's an easy goal for Pearson. It shouldn't have floated in, and it has. Oh. What are we going to do with this team? A Yeovil corner. And they've scored a second goal. <laughs> Oh, the tactic worked so well in that first couple of games, and it is falling apart now. Made a load of changes in trying to get something out of this match. Eamon in the space, but he's not quick enough to get there. Daly is in it for Eamon scores! And we finally got a call back in the 84th minute. Oh, something's happening. Thank God for that. Oh, my God. We played a bit of sketchy stuff there, but Daly found that space and put it inside to Eamon to make it an easy finish.
Traori is seen space. I've seen Pearson in space, and our guys aren't doing anything. And it's 4 1 to Woe Gang. No, what is going on? This is an awful run of form. I'm going to have to look at changing up the formation, I think. This is going to be the last time I try this formation with some tactical tweaks. If not, we're going to go into the next game, and I'm going to try a 4 1 2 3. We have to do something different if it doesn't work. We have a corner. It goes into the middle. Nobody gets to it. Corboa was the man trying to get ahead on it. Jack Rolls scores from outside the box. What a finish. This match is against Oldham, who are fifth in the league at the moment. So a good start to the game. Now defending in our own half from Oldham. Can we clear the ball? It's not going well so far. I feel like this is going to go for a shot. Oof. Come on, Jack. Get an assist here. Doesn't find the right man. Moss gets tackled. Are they going to now work their way up the field? I thought we could capitalise from a corner. No. Three centre-backs. Someone's got to win this. Okay, Lofthouse. Now, with the ball... That's uh, better than I was expecting there. I thought that was going to go all wrong. Playing okay there, but this is what I'm afraid of when that happens. But we, we've managed to get it back. John DeVolken's through to Daly, who gets past the centre-back. Can he convert it? He does! It's 2-0! Oh, thank God for that! There we go. We are now 2-0 up against Oldham. We were waiting for something like this to happen. Finally, looking good. We've still got 15 minutes to go, though, and just have to be a little bit careful now. So I think overall, in the end, we were the slightly better team. The chances were about the same, but we took them, thankfully, a bit more respectable that match. Uh, Jack Rolls are doing really well as that box-to-box -box midfielder. Maybe that's the way we need to go. So, not changing too much for this game against Maidenhead. You can actually see, though, I realised when I made the box-to-box -box midfielder role, I took away any playmaker. So, I've put Dowling as an advanced playmaker on attack. See if that just gives us that extra player up top. I'm hoping it makes a difference. I shouldn't be hoping that in the sense, because I did just win 2-0, but I think we were still not quite creative enough as I would like. Doesn't mind Daly, but Dowling receives the ball and pushing forward. This is more why I wanted. Daly now can take a shot, and it's a goal. Games Daly in the 14th minute. Could just be a coincidence, but that advanced playmaker position, definitely a lot more obvious there, I think. As he drives forward, waiting for a player to open up, and Daly found that space. Maidenhead have a free kick on the edge of the box. And it's a goal. One back to Maidenhead. Not a lot you can do from set pieces down at this level. We'll give them that sparks with a good goal there. Bogans with a free kick on the edge. Doesn't find Carboa who he was looking for. Carboa is gone all the way back. Now we're playing out from there. Find Carboa once again who's in the box. Puts it in the middle. We've been given a penalty. Oh, Reese Brown was tackled. He wasn't even on the ball. Who's taking it? I can't remember who I've set up. It's Rolls. Is he going to make amends for last time? He does. It's 2-1 to Woking. Slightly against the run of play. Our momentum did shift towards Maidenhead for a little bit. But that hopefully puts us back on track. So we brought Casey and Allardyce on as we had a, a quite a lot of tiring players. Hoping nothing bad is going to happen. We only have a one goal advantage as it stands. And they're looking very much on the attack. Aqua's going to get it, isn't he? He does. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Looking to make a change now. What What can we change? No, nothing there. I've, I've not commented yet on anything. I wasn't sure what kind of highlight this was. Uh, the passing are not going too well. I'm hoping we're going to be happy with this highlight. 
But so far, I mean, had have been quite surprising in their play so far. Right, Daly, who can he find? Oh, Ferdinand is going to be sent out. That's what the highlight's for. Right, that puts us in a bit of a better position. We've got another highlight straight afterwards. Is this going to be us capitalising on that red card? Rolls to da oh, sorry, Dowling. Dalladice, Corboa. Corboa finds the net straight after that. It's 3-2 to us. A response straight away to that red card is exactly what we needed. An up and down game here. We've got another highlight straight after that. I can't take this anymore. This game I thought would be a lot more comfortable and it's been far from it. Oh, and Clifton's found the space. Sid Nelson clears it. Great stuff from the defence. That was a saviour. We do see how the match in the end. Uh, on XG, we were slightly better for most of the match. The penalty obviously inflates that as well. I don't know what to do at the moment. We're, we're holding possession well, but we are losing a lot of chances. The three at the back are not stopping the shots. So I'm going to have to adjust that a little bit, I think. So we have arrived at our second live calm game against Solihull Moor. Moors, Moor. Moors. <laughs> oh my god. I got I'm just gonna say Solihull. It's just gonna be easier. We're without three players who are on international duty. Jack Rolls with Cypress and again TJ Bramble and Reese Brown with Antigua. And with this, it's quite frustrating because I was gonna play Reese Brown, but we're not to happen. So we're just kind of gonna have a look at maybe adjusting the defence still. There's a few fitness issues. And then I'll show you the final result of the team. So I ended up taking Cuthbert and Allardyce both off and putting Dan Moss and Syl Nelson on. They've been fairly consistent and are decently rated. They were just injured at the start of the season. Going to come back into it now. You'll see as well, I've left Vulcans on the bench and put Casey on. Vulcans just not performing the best. He just has odd good games. So I'm going to see if Casey, our actual captain, who not really started, can make a difference here. So yeah, second... And last live comp of this episode. Let's see if we can get anything out of this. Our lineup on our form. Two wins out of five games is not great. We've not had a good episode for winning. So the Homer, they're kind of in a similar position. They've not had the best of form recently. So hopefully this is quite an even competition. You can see the table there, it's it's a close one. I think they were up into third, I saw there. We're still to get back into the promotion section. So I'm going to try something a little bit different. I've put our inside forwards into inverted wingers now. See if that's going to make any difference to our chance creation. I feel like we can just have one central striker and that should be enough. A lot of headers going on. We've still got the ball. Gregor Cox sends it back. I thought he might have found Daly there. Daly just kind of sitting back a little bit at the moment. Not really had the opportunity to make anything. And Dallas is forward and he just is wide of the post. I thought that was a given there. Happy-ish so far with this, but we just, as I said, it's not, it's the opportunities we're not creating. We may just have to go a little bit cautious. Just to kind of make sure we don't give up anything. Nelson goes forward to find Daly. Isn't found. Sully hold back in the possession. And again, nearly kind of losing that. Corboa does get to the ball, but Sisba... Sisba? Is that how you say? Oh, Craig Ross, what are you doing? It won't count, thank God for that. That was awful. That was actually awful. Oh my god, the assistant has the eyes of a hawk. That was quite terrible. Yeah, we're going to go a little bit cautious now. Right, Dowling. Just gives it away to Sabara. We are really not able to capitalise on it. And Moss has just let them go through there. And against... Oh... 
Xander Siziba has got the easiest goal of his life there. Not good stuff. So Moss just a bit higher up than I would have hoped. And then Loftus tries to come in and it's all a big mess. Come back to defensive central defenders. I don't trust them now as stoppers. Oh, and Darcy me through again. Come on, guys. Half time there, and yeah, that's a uh, we've had no opportunities really created. Got to look at the tactic before we go further. Do you see what I've done? Is I've put our wing backs a bit more defensive and our inverted wingers a bit more attacking. <sighs> Just trying anything at this point. It's feeling a bit, a fit on a bit unbalanced at the moment. He's telling them we're not happy. Come on, second half. I believe in you. And Nelson's tackled by the striker. Come on, you're a centre-back. You should know how to defend. Saziba goes forward, nearly converts that. Not putting enough pressure on him there. Bringing on Allardyce for Moss, who is getting very tired early on in this game. I don't know what to say. Solihull, I've, I've got something over us at the moment. Right, Lofthouse. Can we create an opportunity? No, we are deflecting it off their defenders. Arthur Reed, Wilkinson, he's very high up the pitch. Nelson tries to move forward to Daly. He does get the ball, and we are now 1-1. An equaliser from Daly there. A missed interception from Jones. We've still got to be worried because that was a bit of fortune there. But we will take it. Sid Nelson put it up the field. Jones just missed the header, and Daly capitalised on that. Going to bring on Suell. I'm going to have a look at going a bit more direct with our passing. See if we can get anything out of doing that. We do one last substitution. Gonna bring Arthur Reed off for Anderson, who's not had a game for us since we started this. Daly's gone forward. Corboa. Corboa scored and even I didn't even see that. I was too busy making technical changes. No, it's offside. Oh I thought, oh my god, something amazing's happened while we've been there. Whoa. Daly was the one offside. So frustrating that. I got a bit excited there. And that is a full time 1-1 one, one against Sully Hill. We didn't play as well as we should. We were lucky to get a goal out of that. And I think we are going to have to leave that 5 formation. I don't think it's going to work for us. Our centre-backs play well, but even when they play well, they're still not able to stop conceding. So yeah, we'll we'll look at changing that. But as you can see, guys, it's been a, a little bit of a rough start on the form. You know, there was quite a few losses in there that we really shouldn't have had. We've come back a little bit into it. Three games undefeated, obviously a drag into the whole Halifax Town next, and I'll show you where they are in the league. So when we come back for episode three, Halifax Town are the team on top of the table. That is going to be a very tricky game. I'm going to make a tactic, and when we come back for that next episode, I'll show you guys that, and we'll see if that just gives us that little bit of an edge again. It was a nice thing to go with at the start, but it's too inconsistent at the moment for this level. Appreciate you guys tuning in for this episode. As always, make sure you like, comment on what you thought of the episode so far, subscribe. All that really helps the video out, and I appreciate it all the same as well. So thank you so much, guys, and take care.